To truly appreciate the real world differences between medium format and 35 mm, I had to put both of them to the test. So I've just got Ashley here assisting me, so we're shooting the pictures at the same time. At the moment we're shooting F16, three seconds, 100 ISO. Just waiting for the wave to sweep up this gully and then on the sweep out, capturing it on the long exposure. We've both got the same graduated filters, a 0.9 three-stop graduated filter and a three-stop ND filter, enabling us to get to three seconds at F16 um, in these daylight conditions. Ready, now. All right, I'm going for another shot, all right? Exposure time still the same on this one. So I'm just shooting both cameras here. Direct comparison with the Hasselblad medium format against the uh, 35 mil full frame camera. I can tell you my experience from using these type of cameras that just looking through the medium format camera is much greater pleasure because I've got a larger, brighter viewfinder. So I'm down here looking, I can see a really clear, bright, big image. And here it's a lot darker and a lot more difficult to see through the smaller 35 mil format camera. Um, now this is a top of the line 35 mil camera and I'm sure it's going to produce very competent results. It'll be interesting to see the comparison on the two shots with the medium format versus the uh, 35 mil format. Right, I think that'll do Ash. Let's uh, pack up. So the time has come to actually examine the results of the 35mm full frame camera against the Hasselblad medium format. And I'm talking about real world results here. So let's start off and to keep things fair, I'm only using Photoshop uh, Camera Raw as the um, device to examine the images so that we're working on neutral territory, if you like, in exploring these images. So I have the two images open in Photoshop, the Hasselblad file, 3FR, and the 35mm full frame file. So the first area I'm going to explore is this area of detail down on the rocks on the right hand side. I'm going to zoom in now on the Hasselblad medium format file to this area and we will see if we can line both up images up to the same position. Now with the um, 35 millimeter shot, I will have to zoom in uh, to a higher percentage to match the same scale, but that is exactly the same as producing two prints to the same size. So we are effectively giving a real world example of what would happen if you blow these images up to the same size. So let's have a look if they line up. Yes, that looks pretty good. So here is the medium format shot and immediately I can see a superb level of detail captured. And if we flick over to 35 mil, we can see that it is considerably softer 
than the medium format, which is expected given that it is uh, a lower resolution camera and a smaller physical sensor size. Again, if we uh, look at the medium format image, the thing that becomes immediately apparent to me is the three-dimensionality of the image. There is just a lot more bite, a lot more tonal range, and a lot more silkiness across the transitions of tones in the medium format image. When we move to the 35mm image, uh, I would say it looks rather tinny by comparison. Another interesting area to look at is this fissure in the rock here where we have this shadow detail in the fissure here. So we're now looking at the 35 millimeter one. And if we flick to the medium format, we can see a much greater level of detail in that granite rock. Let's move over now to the corner detail of the shots. So I'm gonna drop right down to the far corner and I'm looking for corner sharpness on the lenses. I'm going to move across on the 35 millimeter down to the same area and immediately uh, I can see a softer image with greater aberration and corner softening and this isn't just due to the change in resolution this is definitely uh, a lower quality or lower optical quality um, compared to the Hasselblad uh, optical glass. Now let's move across to the tonal range on the main boulder in the foreground of our shot. And again, we can see a much silkier tonal range on the medium format shot. And again, that slightly harsher, tinnier look um, that has been reproduced on the 35 millimeter shot. Let's zoom out a couple of clicks and just explore the silkiness of the tones in the area where the tide is moving around the rocks. Again, a little bit tinny. Uh, the transition's not quite as good in the 35 millimeter, a lot smoother and a lot silkier in the medium format camera. Now, the detail is absolutely superb in the medium format. Let's have a look at shadow detail. I'm going to go into this area here where we've got some darker shadows and I'm going to take us into the same area on the 35 millimeter. We can see some clear chromatic aberration, that green fringing appearing where you see the transition from the dark tones to the edge of the rock with the higher, brighter tones. You can see that green fringing. We don't appear to have that on the medium format shot, or if we do, it is far, far uh, more reduced. The level of detail in that shadow area is also far greater on the medium format shot. And again, that would be expected given that the medium format sensor has a far greater range, dynamic range than the 35 millimeter. Let's also be clear that we are exploring this in a neutral platform by using Camera Raw in Photoshop. We are not using the 35 millimeter camera software or the Hasselblad proprietary software. We are exploring these um, on an even level playing field. One final thing to point out with the two images is the color fidelity. So here is the Hasselblad image. Here is the 35 millimeter image. Now in the 35 millimeter images, uh, it looks uh, bluer overall, sort of colder look to it, which obviously can be adjusted in the color temperature. These are as shot, this is as the camera recorded, and there is a slighter warmer tone, a more natural tone in the Hasselblad image. Now we'll explore color fidelity in greater detail when we look at the shots with the model.